Hello, welcome to day three. Today, we're going to be looking at preparing designs for learning through synchronous and asynchronous activities. Learning outcome. By the end of this topic, you will be able to design synchronous and asynchronous learning activities. Now, let's look at using synchronous and asynchronous learning. There are three basic questions that are often asked. One is when, why, how. When do you use it? Why do you use it? How do you use it? So we're going to look at when you need to use the asynchronous. Use asynchronous in reflecting on complex issues. When synchronous meetings cannot be scheduled because of work, family, or other commitments. Now, you use this synchronous when discussing less complex issues, getting acquainted, or planning tasks. The second question, why? Why would you want to use asynchronous? Use asynchronous when students have more time to reflect because the sender does not expect an immediate answer. And you use the synchronous when students become more committed and motivated because a quick response is expected. Now, the last question is how? How do you use asynchronous? Use asynchronous means such as email, discussion boards, blogs. And you could use other means. Also, how will you use synchronous learning? What you could use, use synchronous means such as video conferencing, IM, chat. Then you complement with face-to-face -face meeting where need be. Here are some examples of asynchronous. Students expected to reflect on a course topic and maintain a blog journal. Students may critically assess their peers' idea through a discussion forum. Now let's look at examples under the synchronous. Students expected to work in group may be advised that as support for getting to know one another. Instructor want to present concepts from the literature in a simplified way by giving online lecture using video conferencing. These are the thoughts of Heskin 2008. Some of these things today may have changed in the area of when, why, how, but these stand as a good foundation when you want to use synchronous and asynchronous learning activities. Now, creating a learning climate in your blended learning. Creating a learning climate in your blended learning. Let's look at the, each other two headings. We'll look at the activity, we'll look at the description. And we are looking at this in line with what Garrison 2013 came up with. So what we're going to discuss here is an adapted form from Garrison. The activity will have introductory letter or video, description, a letter or YouTube video clip that welcomes students with an overview of the content and what is expected from the students. It can be posted to discussion forum for comments or left on the course page. 
Even now, we do it a lot. Because if you are going to use, they create a climate, because even in the face-to-face -face environment, you create a compound, you create the environment, you create a climate for learning. So the same goes if you go in blended, you must create that climate. So the use of welcome video is very, very handsful when it comes to that. Now, powerful learning experience discussion is another activity. Present an icebreaker on the first day of class that will make the student reflect and apply their past learning experience. Debrief the class of the power of learning experience. Another activity is learning preferences inventory. On this, student could be asked to take a learning preference inventor. And we have again, the final part of that activity is discussions with previous students. Invite some students from previous class to attend the introductory face-to-face -face section or to join an online discussion to talk about the nature of the course as they experienced it. These are different forms you could use to create learning climate in the blended form. So in summary, we have learned about how to use synchronous and asynchronous learning and what to consider when creating synchronous and asynchronous learning. Three questions are often asked and they are key. When, why, and how. Having said this, you have some assignments to do. Now, take this assignment. Using the questions when, why, and how, develop three synchronous learning activities to measure a stated learning outcome. Present your answer for review in the live section. With this, we've come to the end of the class section for this week. And tomorrow you're going to walk through the aspects that has to do with the discussion forums and work on your assignments. And by Friday, we're going to meet read time and you will take your, uh, your quiz on that day as well. So with this, I say thank you for coming to class.